But yeah, best of three on Europe, Daniel versus Ashley. I think this should be close. Honestly, overall, um, I have Daniel as the favorite in this matchup for two reasons. Number one, current form. I think that Daniel looks phenomenal. He's 3-0 uh, on my stream. He's won every series he's played on my stream. Two of those were against North American competition, uh, Lion Blaze and Dries. And one of those series was on the European servers against Ams. So Ams, Daniel's a fair ping matchup. This isn't, this is an advantage for Ashley. He's on his home server, Daniel is away. Um, but yeah, Daniel is very, very good in show match setting. And I think that not isn't just because of the three matches that he's played on my channel, but also he's played a whole bunch of uh, matches on Fear's channel. And that's given him, you know, a lot of experience in a series format. Whereas Ashley, he's played one show match on my stream, lost it, looked nervous. So I think Daniel's a heavy favorite here. But yeah, also based on current form. You guys want game sign lighter? I think I can't do that because I've already got it max, but I can, I'll can. i reduce my volume. Let me, re let me reduce my mic. I think my mic is really loud today. I don't know why. Okay, how's this? I've reduced my mic by a bit. Ooh, that's a tough one to read. <laughs> you can forgive Daniel for letting that one by because Ashley is usually so consistent with the flip resets. And he, yeah, Daniel knew he had one. And had to respect it. Didn't have a lot of boost. Needed the pre-jump. Is that better? Yeah, type, type one in chat if this is a good balance of microphone and game sound. Because I've already got the game sound maxed, so I can't do anything with that. Oh, Ashley, bit of a mistake. He leaves the ball. Must have expected Daniel to play the ball here, maybe into the corner. Oh, no, he just tried, He just missed a touch. He just tried to touch that. Glancing blow into the corner. Misses. And it's a free goal for Daniel. That's a huge mistake for uh, Ashley. Because he had control there. That was a winning kickoff position. Great half flip. So... Kickoff's going pretty even. I think Daniel's 1-2, Ashley's 1-2. I actually have Daniel, or Ashley, winning the kickoff that he just got scored on before this. Um, but the, the kickoff recoveries for Ashley have needed to be good in order for him to win these. They haven't been, you know, hard, big winning kickoffs. He's had just slight advantageous positions. It's good pressure on the ball. Daniel missed the boost in the corner. Both players trying to be really tight with the margins right now. Clipping the inside edge of boost grabs. Daniel bailing on that double touch because he knew Ashley should have that. Actually, Ashley doesn't, but he's like, he's going to score because of the miss. So this is a really interesting start to the game. Ashley making a couple of mistakes, and he scored off both of them. He scored off the missed reset shot, and now he's scored because he misses a back wall clear and just recovers faster than the two players. Good uh, improvisation by Ashley. But yeah, very weird to see uh, mistakes like that working out in his favor as much as they do. Now, just for your guys' information, we're we're not really looking at this whole series as a best of six. It's sort of... Oh, I don't really know. I, I kind of want your guys' opinions on it. Do we call this a best of six, or do we call it just two best of threes? Because I've been thinking about it myself, and I do... I, I think there's good reasons for both. I think best of six, there's a reason... The good reason for that is that you get... Well, you're more likely to get an overall winner um, because any 4-2 score is a win. You know, you can you just need to win one game on the away server to get uh, to win the series. You know, win one game on the away server, 3-0 your, your home server. You win the series. But the two times best of three, I think I'm starting to lean more towards that because you do just win a series. If you, if you win two games in a best of three, you win. If you win three games, you win. A win is a win. And the more I think about it, the more I think this should just be two standalone best of threes. And, uh, you know, if Ashley wins 2-1 here, then gets swept. I still think it's, uh, you know, I, I think both players win. You know, you can you can still say that Daniel would be the stronger player overall there. Um, but, yeah, it's a couple best of threes. That's the way I'm looking at it. Great catch. That's a phenomenal play by Daniel. He's kept the ball on Ashley's um, weak side this entire time. Look, he picks a wall shot, gets on the opposite side of the ball, keeps it behind Ashley, who was making a move in field. So a dead even game so far. It looks like Daniel's lagging. Oh my goodness. I hope that fixes. I was going to say, looks like Daniel's coping with the ping quite well. Then I see the red spike. I have to think that he tabbed out or something there because that does happen when you alt tab sometimes. Ashley trying to disguise how much boost he's got here. He's trying to not reveal the fact that he's actually got the ability to accelerate this ball. And now there is the counterattack. Daniel respects it. He knew that Ashley was acting a bit suspicious there. <laughs> You always have to look out for that. Your opponent isn't using any boost at all. Uh, maybe they've got 30. 
Ashley really going aggressively for this. Oh, what a recovery! Inside of the post and into the net. Ashley all in with the flip reset. Or so you would think. He's got follow-up plans. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Didn't have much time to get behind that ball, turn around and send it back on target. You can see Daniel was just setting up to collect the possession, play it into the corner, start his own offensive play. Not this time. Now Ashley fakes the ceiling challenge. Daniel doesn't bite on it. Floor pinch. Actually, it's a mind game. And Ashley hangs around in midair. That is a phenomenal save. Daniel sold that brilliantly. And Ashley scored. Oh my goodness, that's clutch. Daniel really... I mean, I thought it was a floor pinch. I, I, I'm casting and I thought I, I thought it was a floor pinch. I was looking at it from his POV. It looked like he's going to go for the floor pinch. But he actually fakes it. Ashley pre-jumps, anticipating the shot and recovers mid-air, still makes it back to the ball. I mean, that's two times in a row now that Ashley's just scored purely off fast recoveries that Daniel wasn't ready for. It's hard to be ready for those. Now Daniel, shot down again. Ashley starting to find his groove. Daniel, from a very good position in the middle of this game. Got to remember, a tight game on the EU server. That's going to make Daniel feel pretty good. Ashley's going to be the one with the pressure on him there. But, uh, my goodness, Ashley is something else. Daniel thought about the heavy hit instead. Draws it back for the flip reset. Ashley keeps it out of the net. But risky to <laughs> defensive positions for Ashley all the way through here. These are not easy positions to be in. You have to respect the hard hits whenever Daniel's coming at you. Now, Ashley's dropped there, so he doesn't have the dodge forever. Daniel saw that and made a move. And he's defended successfully. This time it will be an early shot, but it's not on target. And Ashley... Wasn't quite sure of it. You saw there that he jumped towards the near post top corner just so that he could save it if it was on net. When he realized it wasn't, he just lands on the inside of the post. Recoveries for Ashley have been the difference in this game. And I mean, Daniel's played well. He's looked like he's not only competitive in this uh, matchup on the away server, but it looks like he could win this. He could easily win a game, maybe even a series. Early on, I think, you know, he started like the better player. Ashley scored off a couple misplays. Didn't look comfortable. He's warmed up well, and he's definitely the favorite now on this first best of three. Oh, Ashley's flexing on him now. That's dirty. Daniel fakes the challenge, probably wishes he didn't, because Ashley's got the finesse from close range. This guy's offensive repertoire is unreal. It really is. You can't really blame Daniel for conceding these shots. But, you know, change-ups that Daniel has to make, I think, going into the next game include respecting Daniel's or respecting Ashley's recoveries um, and, secondly, being a bit more aggressive with his plays because when Ashley's in the groove like this, when he's in the zone, you're not going to save his shots uh, when you back off and when you let him come at you. You have to get in his face. You have to break up his rhythm, especially when you're playing with 108 ping. You need to play a very proactive style of defense. Oh, this is just crazy. Ashley is just taking it to a whole other level. Completely styling on Daniel here. Obviously, Daniel's going to get his chance for revenge later on, but right now, this is Daniel's game. This is... Abs or, I keep getting their names mixed up. It's these A noises. <laughs> but this is Ashley's game, I mean to say. What an impressive game it has been. Um, crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. Took control. It was a 4-4 score, and now it's 5-9. With Ashley taking it um, in stunning fashion. Now, that being said, I still think Daniel looked good in this matchup. And Ashley has set the bar so high for himself in this first game. It's going to be so difficult to replicate that performance that we just saw. I don't know if he can. I mean, I've seen him do it before, but that was something else. That is incredible. He really did bring out something special in the first game there. But he's still in the home server. Daniel's still the one. He's the underdog in this uh, part of the show match. I think he's the favorite overall. But in this part of the show match, especially after going 1-0 down, he is definitely the underdog. Ashley will know that. But look at that from Daniel. What a start to game one. Delayed flip reset shot. So he lands the reset. Ashley's just sitting on the back wall waiting to see what's going to happen. Just when he thinks Daniel's going for the mind game, Daniel pulls out the flip. That's beautiful. It really did look like he was just going to use the reset to force Ashley to stay back, and then he's going to play for a catch. That's why Ashley moved in. He was reading 
a dribble cat or a catch into a dribbling play. Daniel one step ahead. So pressure back on Ashley now. He's supposed to win this. But he can, you know, put himself in a strong position. Oh my goodness! What a save by Daniel! Brick wall defense. He got clattered. Ashley got a pretty solid contact on him there. Daniel doesn't care. He just uses his dodge to go right back into the ball. That was a great um, great defensive play by Daniel. It's really tough to make those against Ashley. Now Daniel a bit too far all in. For the corner boost seal. It's wide open for Ashley. And no chance for Daniel to get back to that. Yeah, that was just a little bit too risky. Of course, Daniel... On his screen, it might look like he's further ahead than he actually is. I'm not sure, because we are seeing the game um, as the server sees it, essentially. Unless, of course, I have any lag. I mean, that's the thing, because uh, my internet could lag at some point, and then I see some, some lag that neither of the players see. But uh, for the most part, what we see as a spectator is closer to what the server um, is actually reporting to the player's clients than what the away player sees himself. So Daniel didn't look like he was getting that, but on his screen he might have looked like he was. He's got to be careful with those situations. Anything that looks really touch and go like that is probably not worth going on. Daniel, strong reset again. And a beautiful finish. No chance for Ashley on that play. And I love the pace change from Daniel on this one because last time he went for a reset, he slowed it down. He waited. Um, this time he just goes for the shot immediately and Ashley challenged early, expecting Daniel to play a similar sort of strategy to the last flip reset. But that's not what Daniel's gone for at all. Great save, Ashley. Denies the top corner shot. Off a strong kickoff from Daniel. Daniel's kickoffs have been phenomenal. And he somehow knocked that off his own post and away from danger, despite the fact that Ashley was in his way. But that's not the best defensive play from Daniel. He's given one away and he's going to be really annoyed at himself for that one. Because he did not need to do this. That's just a really poor touch. Had the ability to just glue himself to that ball, 50-50 it to safety, while grabbing more boost. Unfortunately, he's just completely mishit it. Now Ashley misses completely. And this is not the first time we've seen this. Ashley's trying to be very precise with his uh, back corner plays. I believe he just, that little nudge up against Daniel's car sent him off track a little bit. Yeah, but what he was trying to do there, it might look a bit weird. You might be thinking, well, why did Ashley just dodge straight past the ball? What's he thinking? He was trying to get a glancing blow on the ball, but he accidentally brushed up against Daniel on his way past him. And that took him off track just slightly, and he missed. So, uh, Daniel, accidental or not, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I think he tried to, you know, have a presence in that position, physically. Um, and he has done. He's just tapped Ashley and then scores the open net. A risky play for Daniel in the back corner. Ashley absorbs the 50-50 well. Drops the ball carry into a bounce dribble. And a good old-fashioned cut and flick to the top of the net. No all-in moves in this attack for Ashley. He's playing for the boost seal. Look at Daniel's boost management, though. Still 50 to spare. He knew that his boost was getting stolen. And he's played this perfectly. That is masterful. Daniel disguises his boost total really well there. We saw Ashley doing the same thing earlier on in this game. Or this series, I should say. Had about 30 boosts available to him. And he wasn't using any. He wasn't feathering it. He was trying to make it look like he had none. Daniel didn't fall for it. Now there I think Ashley did fall for Daniel's trick a little bit. He definitely underestimated how much boost Daniel had available to him. Now Daniel cuts in front of Ashley with the bump and cuts the attack short in the process. Yeah, this is the best of three EU servers. We're going to do a best of three on uh, USC servers after. Big bump by Ashley. Trying to get the comeback started. That's one way to do it. Daniel keeping up a bit more ball pressure in this game. But I would still love to see more fake challenges. I would love to see more, um, you know, dive-in challenges. Especially towards the end of this game. He needs to keep the pressure on Ashley. Another kickoff win for Daniel, though. And a strong shot to the top left. Gives Ashley no chance. Ashley's got to fix this kickoff. He's in trouble here. He's in big trouble. That's a big, big kickoff win for Daniel. What is Ashley going to do to try and resolve that? Didn't look like he had the best approach there. I think Ashley's uh, just slightly off with his kickoff mechanics at the moment. He did read that that was hitting the bar. But he didn't read that Daniel was going to beat him to it. 7-3. And Daniel's still crushing it from the center circle. 
Great bounce for him there. That's gone so high into the air. Ashley probably didn't expect that. And now it's really all on the kickoffs. If Ashley can start to get some possession, he's got a chance. We've seen that his offense is incredibly hard to stop, but Daniel's just winning every kickoff right now. And he should just waste some time here. He's got to just let the clock do the work for him. Oh, well, well, you know, scoring one more goal is not going to hurt either. You can see Ashley's kind of just given up on that play. He could have probably contested this. I think he uh, backed off, expecting the first shot to just straight up be on target. And finally, Ashley gets something to work with here, but he's missed the boost. Oh, no, it's all gone wrong, and that's a smart play. That's what I wanted to see from Daniel on the last kickoff, because... The only way that he loses this is if he gives Ashley more chances on net. And Ashley can't get chances on net if Daniel starts to play the ball end to end. Wastes 20, 30 seconds after every kickoff that he gets possession on. There's no way for Ashley to come back. So this is actually the winning strategy for Daniel. Just play it around in defense. You've already got a four goal lead. Well, now five goal. Um, but, I, you know, we talked about what Daniel has to do to come back in this game. I think he did respect Ashley's recoveries a lot more. We didn't see Daniel out of position, underestimating Ashley's speed anywhere near as much in this game. And now it's quite simple. The job for Ashley in the third game on EU is to establish a more solid kickoff strategy, or at least a kick more solid kickoff repertoire. So whenever the two are going head-to-head -head with the standard approach, Daniel's coming out on top the majority of the time. He's just had a more... Solid hitbox, a more solid approach, more solid contact on the ball. But Ashley can mix it up. Could go for some delayed approaches, could go for some half flips on the diagonal spawn. We haven't seen either of those. We haven't seen fake kickoffs on the diagonal spawn. Um, I want to see more variety from Ashley. But he's probably not going to go for any of that this game. Since this game's already over, there's no point showing other kickoff strategies to your opponent when they've already got you beat in this game. Start game three, though. Ashley needs to mix it up. He has to provide variety. Otherwise, Daniel's just going to take possession off the majority of kickoffs again and make it very difficult for Ashley to win. Thank you to Lil Lama for the 11-month prime. Thank you to Nimbus for the 13-month prime. Um, we've also got Luke Bryan 9 with a brand new prime. And Sam Bastion with a 3-month prime. Appreciate you guys. We've got Iconic Alec with a 3-month Prime. We've got Port Miner with a Tier 1. Psycho uh, Not Dude with a Tier 1. Ward Up with a 35-month Tier 1. Uh, Psycho Not Dude gifting a sub to Jamantooth as well. And also Dipalu QQ. Thanks for the 3-month. Appreciate all you guys. That's a better start now for Ashley. So switching it up to the Fennec. This actually, I like this, in fact. I've seen Ashley play a lot of Dominus, Octane, and Fennec. So this is a card that he's got a lot of experience in. And I've talked to uh, Khaled a lot about the Fennec. I've talked to apparently Jack recently about his uh, switch to the Fennec. A lot of the guys who play the Fennec and who play against the Fennec at the highest level have the uh, um, impression that the Fennec is just a better car for kickoffs in 50-50s. So what did Ashley just get crushed in in game two? Kickoffs. What does he switch to? The Fennec. So this could be a good solution, or at least could be a good change up. But was that a mistake for Ashley? He backs away with a dodge. That signs to Daniel that he's got a free play on the ball. Somewhat wasted. Uh, Daniel just playing that one straight towards Ashley, who waited on the goal line. And Ashley tried to hook that, sh or he tried to like chip that shot much higher there. The reason he's back flipping is to keep his car at the halfway line. Beautiful finish. Ashley side flips it to the bottom left corner. Daniel giving him a bit too much space on that play. No fake challenges again. He's just backing off. He's playing, well, you know, he's playing really, really defensive. And then at the last minute, he decides to challenge sideways. Probably not going to work. Ashley's got a clear view of the bottom left corner there. I think Daniel's got to be a bit more deceptive. He's got to hide behind the ball if he's going to rush in his challenges like that. Again, impressive aerial play by Ashley in offense. He stays quick with his recovery and look at the reaction time of Daniel you really have to be so fast to save shots like that on the away server sick recovery by Ashley he got bumped there immediately wave dashes to get back in position double reset for Daniel he's got the pre-flip as well and Ashley's read it that's a great save I don't know how on earth he managed to read that one 
Has he missed? He has! Ashley's missed a wide open net! Oh dear, that was an easy 3-0 after such a great save on a double reset with a pre-flip shot at the end of it. At least Ashley's worked his way into a goal at the end of this uh, exchange. He would have been furious if he went um, back to a one-goal game after a wide open net miss. Cyberfire, thanks for the 14-month prime. Appreciate it, man. Ashley again, just trying to get high shots. Daniel, last second save. That was... Well, I mean, uh, maybe on his screen it was only halfway across the line. It was like 90% of the way across the line in our view. Yeah, the mind game from Daniel. He sold him, sold him again on it. So convincing. Just so hard to read. Flip reset. And Daniel the entire time looks like he's going to pull the trigger on that. Whether it's a shot midair, whether it's a wave dash shot when the ball bounces, it really looks like Daniel's going to be um, using his dodge there. I love the wave dash shot on the landing, though. That's, you know, one of my favorites to see executed at this level. Oh, what a touch by Ashley. That's pretty much the only way that he could have secured a back corner boost and stay goal side of the ball. So beautiful. Now he's threatening a double. Doesn't get it. And actually has to be quick back here because Daniel's got heavy hits. And that one is too heavy for Ashley to catch up with. First touch left a lot to be uh, desired. Left a lot to be done. Now I know that um, Ashley's pretty confident with his double touches and ones. But he left himself so much to do there. Too much to do. The lead is evaporating. This is where Ashley needs to be so careful. Oh! Cool shot save for Daniel. Ashley had the ball past him, but Daniel's bumped him up into it and knocked it clear of danger. Of course, that is just something that can happen when you're trying to get yourself and the ball over the top of the opponent. Now, speaking of, Daniel's done just that. It's 3-3. Ashley caught on the wrong side of the ball. Daniel has brought this one back. It's a dead even matchup. Absolutely knife edge stuff here. Now this is similar to game one. What happened after uh, the tie game in game one is Ashley popped off. Now can he do that again? I'm not sure he can because it's so difficult to pop off to that level. The kind of plays that Ashley was producing in game one are unbelievably hard to do consistently and you've got to think that Daniel's going to be more ready for it now especially after witnessing Ashley's ability to recover and get back into position as often as he has. Ashley, bit of a giveaway of possession. That's not a threatening shot. Daniel's going to try recycle quickly. Ashley cuts him short. That's a great pressure play by Ashley. You know, if he backs off there, I think Daniel's scoring. So he just goes for the challenge. Convincing fake challenge afterwards as well. This is a high pressure defensive style from Ashley. But he decides not to go for the back wall read. A smart play by Ashley because Daniel's got that covered. Ashley's playing for the long game. But Daniel is defending so well. He's going to wait for the 100 boost to spawn. That's going to give Ashley the full pitch to dribble with once again. Is Ashley going to go for another air dribble bump? No, actually has to just accept the 50-50 because he dropped that. Played for the boost steal. Daniel's got him beaten to that one. And the bumps afterwards. Had Ashley all over the place. He's almost got the demo. That could have easily been the game. And it still could be. Oh my goodness, Daniel's missed an open net. He chased Ashley up the wall, threatening a demo. Had a wide open net and misses it. Now Ashley back into the air, air double dunks him. Daniel has a strong 50-50, it's in the back corner. Surely that's game. Daniel's missed again. Two wide open net misses for Daniel. One for Ashley earlier in the game. What is happening? Daniel's gone in for an early challenge. Surely he gets this one on target. Finally, third time lucky. He puts the open net into the net. Wow. Daniel. Feeling the nerves. He has to be, because there's no way that he misses those open nets on the regular. I've, I don't think I've ever seen Daniel miss an open net. <laughs> Not like this. But you've got to give it to him. That challenge was genius. Dan Daniel sneaks in. Ashley didn't see him coming. And he's done it. Daniel from behind has got the game three. Well played. Really well played. You know, I've, got, I've just got to give him full credit for that early challenge at the end. He misses two open nets. And what does he do? He doesn't back off. He doesn't go and lick his wounds in defense and then hope that he can defend the counter-attack or the follow-up pressure, which will probably be the last zero-second play of the game. No. Daniel's challenges, because he knows that that's not what Ashley's expecting. And Ashley, didn't, he didn't see it coming at all. He didn't see it coming at all. So now the, the coin flip win pays off for Daniel. He wins the EU server. 
and Ashley is going to have his work cut out for him here. He's really going to struggle. Really, really going to struggle here. Well played by both players, though, honestly. Really well played. Great, great uh, best of three there. So much pressure on Ashley in this uh, third game. And full credit to Daniel. He really did play well. The show match experience is proving to be valuable here. And now he's surely got the uh, the heavy advantage in the series. It's hard to see Ashley... Hard to imagine Ashley... I don't think... Uh, you know, if he takes a game, I'll be very impressed. Very, very impressed. Because uh, for anybody just shooting in, before the series started, I said there's two reasons why I think Daniel's the, the favorite in this matchup. Number one, show match experience. Oh, <laughs> not, not flipper, he says. So Ashley's got that. <laughs> Ashley's got those. I think he's got the edge even over Daniel in that regard. But uh, yeah, I think Daniel, his show match experience is immense compared to Ashley. Ashley's brand new to the show match scene. He's only played a handful. Daniel's played dozens. So he's got the pressure. He, or, you know, he's got the... Uh, the experience playing under that pressure. And secondly, I think current form Daniel is um, looking um, better as well. Because Ashley was up in the top 10 recently in uh, ranked ones, but he, I think he's down to 20 or something right now, which, you know, not that's not bad. Don't get me wrong. Ashley's still extremely high rated. Oh, he's up by two though. As long as Ashley can attack, he's going to be fine in this matchup. As long as he's attacking, he's not going to care what the ping is. He's playing the game. He's just playing his game. Um, but like I was saying, recently Ashley has been experimenting with different styles of play. He really skyrocketed to the top 10 um, of the leaderboard and he was cemented there. He was a solid top 10 player in the world. Ranked, just all out offense. He was relentless with his attacks. But recently Ashley's been trying to solidify. He's trying to mix it up a little bit, which I think is really smart. He's... Um, becoming a more well-rounded player, but in, in the, uh, doing so, you know, that process has some growing pains. Um, and that's why I think, re you know, recently Ashley hasn't been quite as terrifying on the ladder. As you can see, he's still got the, he's still got the, uh, the finesse. He's still got the plays. Yeah, Daniel's always had that solid play style. Just like First Killer, he came onto the scene with really really solid defense and mechanics so that's kind of I'd say that's kind of different from Ashley I don't think Ashley started off as a, a foundational player like a solid defender he started off as a almost a freestyler in his offense and now he's trying to learn the, the defensive aspect and become a brick wall on the goal line but Daniel already is a brick wall on the goal line um, and he's got the the offensive prowess as well. So that's why I think Daniel's a favorite here. These guys are very similar in what they're capable in doing in offense. I think Daniel's defense is definitely better. That being said, we are halfway through the game and Ashley's up by two. And I think Daniel is standing off very far here. He's waiting for this game to win itself. Daniel, you gotta go out and get it against Ashley. You can't just sit back and wait for him to, to beat himself. If you give Ashley control, if you give him time on the ball, his confidence only grows. Will Daniel convert this open net opportunity? He's got Ashley spawning far side. That's ideal. So good little uh, coin flip win there for Daniel. If Ashley spawns near post, I'm pretty sure he would have been right in front of him. <laughs> yeah, the, the spawn would have been bizarre. If Ashley spawned near post there, I think there may have been a collision. I'm not sure. I always talked about this. I'm, I'm still trying to think. I wonder what the way is to remove that randomness. It's the only RNG in Rocket League. Well, I guess yeah, there's more RNG in the sense of kickoff spawns. Oh my goodness, Ashley with the disrespect! Whoa! <laughs> what was that? Fakes him, slows it down, and then just chips it in while Daniel's going back. That is, that's unreal. What is Ashley doing? <laughs> he was only up by one. <laughs> Oh man, Ashley's got some guts to go for a play like that. I mean, Daniel could have probably saved it. I don't know how, but they we're probably away. Double reset for Ashley. Decides not to play the ball though, because it was not sitting up well for him. He's starting to feel it now though. Maybe a bit too much. This is like OG Ixo. You know, he pops off and then ends up having the positive tilt. Oh, what a save though. Ashley is not holding back at all. He's got to, I think he's got to rein it in though. What on earth is he doing? <laughs> what is Ashley doing? 
He's starting to get a little bit too uh, hyped up here. He needs to tone it down a gear or two. He needs to tone it down a gear. He was up by two goals. Possession secured. Oh, that's a great recovery though. Ashley's one step ahead on that play. Daniel thought that he had uh, Ashley beaten to the corner boost. Look at Ashley's early cut in the midfield. This is actually extremely aggressive. And I think Daniel's been a bit surprised at the aggression that Ashley's brought to this game. He's not going towards back corners very often. He's just playing straight for the ball. But that's a sick dribble by Daniel. It's all about angles here. Daniel switches sides. He's not going straight at Ashley. And that just gives him so many parts of the goal that he can aim at. He can shoot that top right, top left, even just chip it over the middle like we saw. And it's all in that first touch. That's uh, you know showing the level that Daniel's at with his ground game. He's not just uh, an OG NA player. I mean, even a couple of years ago, you watch a high-level NA lobby, players are just dribbling straight at each other. They're going directly at the goal. Whereas in this matchup here, I think Daniel's had the better ground play approaches. He's been the one adding angles to his approach. He's been the one um, keeping Ashley guessing. But the kickoffs are the difference again. Ashley's thrown this one a little bit. There's a, there's a lot going on here. Ashley has thrown away a two-goal lead. He, he just gave Daniel a goal. Then Daniel shows us his, um, his intelligence with his dribbling approaches. And then he's just crushing it with the kickoffs. Ashley's got himself to blame for that one, though. It's Daniel's excellence, his consistency from the center circle, combined with Ashley's inconsistency. And now this was getting away from him. Ashley had this one under control. Well, at least maybe not under control fully. I think it was still a very even game. But he's giving it away a little bit. Ashley's controller malfunction, copium. I think if anybody's got the excuse of uh, controller malfunctions, it would be Ashley. He's trying to. He's pushing like every button on the pad with his chin. So, I mean, if Ashley tells me like, oh yeah, but one of my buttons didn't really register that input, I'll be like, I believe you. <laughs> I, I believe you, you don't need to explain that. <laughs> Straight up. I've never heard Ashley say anything like that though, just for the record. He streams his own uh, rank games often on his YouTube channel, or, or on, on his Twitch channel, I should say. I've never heard him once complain about uh, controller issues or anything, or lag. He's extremely humble, he's extremely uh, grounded with his mentality. And even now, you know, he's going for the comeback and he's making plays, Ashley is again. <laughs> he's mind game Daniel. Daniel, you gotta start going for the ball, man. Ashley is in your head. <laughs> I think Ashley's simultaneously in his own head and in Daniel's head this game. He's in both of their heads. He's occupying minds. Okay, still a chance for Ashley to take this. He needs to score with every attacking play, though, and there's no time to waste. So he's going to go straight for the air dribble bump, I bet. Okay, flicks it. And that's a reasonable recovery. Does Ashley have it? No, Daniel plays straight through the ball. There it is. I really would have liked to see an air dribble bump from Ashley there. I think he's had a good enough success rate with that strategy that it made sense to play completely all in. And, you know, it is technically possible to score two goals in three seconds. Literally all Daniel has to do is hit the ball on this kickoff and he's fine. Hey Patches345, thanks for the two-month prime. Welcome back to the channel. Johnny's dad, RL, thanks for the six-month prime. Welcome back as well. Yeah, well played. Daniel just more consistent, simply. That's really all there is to this. Daniel is consistent and Ashley's not consistent. In, he's definitely not consistent in that game. That was the opposite of consistency. Um, but yeah, Daniel... So, so solid. I love this matchup, though. This is such a cool style. Or it's such a cool stylistic mismatch. Maybe I shouldn't say mismatch. Mismatch makes it sound as if one person has an advantage, whereas I don't think that's the case here. The differences are... Daniel is... Trying to play... He, he's trying to make no unforced errors and no mistakes. That is his... Uh, his, his idea. He just tries to play a perfect game. Whereas you've got Ashley really pushing himself to the limit and beyond. He is trying to uh, take this to a level that he's even he's never uh, been at before. And either one of those styles can win. I think Daniel's style is more likely to win more often. There's the air dribble bump. See, I thought he was going to do this last game. 
I think he probably should have, because he's really good at these. <laughs> this is hard to stop. Um, yeah, I think Daniel's style is more likely to win most of the time, but Ashley's style is very much... It's like it's like Devo back in the day. If he shows up, he wins, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like Devo, when he popped off in ones back in the day, Fairy Peak talked about him in an interview. What it's like, well, he talked about in an interview what it's like to play against Devo, and I thought he had a really cool take on it. His take was, well, you know, when you play against Devo, and Devo has the ball, you just watch him, because there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to get the ball off him. He's just got the ball, and he's doing something crazy, and then one or two things happen. Either he scores, or he misses, and you get an open net. That's really all there is to playing against Devo, and a lot of this matchup has been that. It's been D Daniel just sitting back thinking, well, He's got double reset, so I hope he misses. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's it is a coin flip whether or not Daniel or uh, whether Ashley misses. But yeah, Daniel's goal line defense is otherworldly. Oh, Daniel, what are you doing, buddy? That's three open net misses today. <laughs> I, you know, I think Daniel's definitely been a bit nervous. I've never seen this from him. I've never seen this from him. The inconsistency on the open nets. This is the first time I've ever seen this from Daniel. Like I told you guys, he is Mr. Consistent. Um, but apparently today, I think it's got to be that EUNA flavor. You know, that spice. It does add something to a matchup like this. Daniel repping his entire region. Oh, what a flick. Whew, that's clean. I actually didn't even go out too far for this. Like, he just... Fakes the challenge, turns back immediately, and it's too late. It's just too late. In off the bar uh, for Daniel. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Thanks for the brand new prime. I really appreciate that. I've got to actually, re I, I probably realized, so since this is EU versus NA, since this is Daniel versus Ashley, I just realized that we might have. Uh, Daniel fans in here who have never heard of Ashley before and we might have Ashley fans in here who have never heard of Daniel before so I didn't I don't think I did justice to explaining why both of these players are so uh, hyped up right now and why they should be so hyped up right now um, but yeah Daniel he's the next first killer he is the second coming of first killer in NA I think uh, Ashley's just a nice one to himself here I think he's I think he's uh, being a bit self-deprecating with that one probably wishes he had a better save yeah, Daniel is the second coming of first killer. He's 14 years old. He's going to be 15 in December. I really think he could be the next first killer. The way he plays reminds me of first killer um, when he first burst onto the scene. And yeah, as long as he gets himself on a good team, as long as he has a good attitude, as long as he stays uh, positive, I think he, he has a great future with him uh, ahead of him in Rocket League. And then Ashley... He is the one-handed wonder. He plays with one hand. He was born with one hand. Um, I should really know this by now, but I always forget. I think he doesn't have a right hand, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. I think he was born without a right hand. So you have to go check out his stream. He plays on his own channel with a face cam. You can see how he does it. He kind of holds his controller between his right shoulder and his chin like a violinist would hold a violin. And he pushes all the buttons on the pad with his chin and then he uses his left hand for the uh, joystick. So it's unbelievable. What this guy does is truly inspirational. And, you know, I, I think he also has a future in threes if he stays on the grind. He's young as well, he's only 15, so he's only just came out of the scene recently. Made a switch from PS4. Immediately skyrocketed in, ranked, in rank. Yeah, he's unbelievable. He is unbelievable. Both these guys are unbelievable. I think that mechanically, you're looking at the absolute pinnacle of Rocket League right now. These guys are top, top tier mechanics. Top tier mechanics. That's beautiful. Well played, Daniel. Just dissecting Ashley's defense right now. He's back to a more solid kickoff strategy than Ashley. So he's winning kickoffs pretty consistently. And Ashley, when he's in those boost disadvantages, uh, or rather, when he's in those positions with a boost disadvantage, he isn't as comfortable as Daniel is to defend with low boost. I think Daniel, even with 20, 30 boost, is pretty confident in his defense um, against anybody. He knows that he's going to have a good chance of stopping any attack because that is one of his absolute strengths in ones. 
Uh, whereas Ashley, he knows that he's got a long way to go to get to that level of defense um, in 1v1. It is possible, though. We've, se we've seen that kind of evolution in players in the past. We've seen that from Ixo. He started off as pretty much an offensive player who didn't know much in the way of defense other than early challenging. And then he absolutely figured out how to become better in that regard. Look at Ashley here, though. That's a double reset into somewhat of an air dribble dunk. That's mad. Has a little stall in there as well. No flips into the dunk. I mean, he's putting together so many plays here. That's that's difficult to... <laughs> it's difficult to even notice in real time. Uh, but yeah, there's still a chance here for Ashley to come back. He's got that pop-off ability offensively. He could just bang in five goals if he, uh, you know, picks the right sh if he picks the right shots and executes on them. But uh, that being said, I think it's a low percentage chance because Daniel's just so good. Ooh, what a save by Ashley! In fact, he's hit that so hard that he can't catch up to it. Has to try and work this into the middle quickly. Oh, he will get a second chance at it because Daniel's taking the scenic route back. Where did Daniel go in this play? That's a slow recovery for him. Oh, he just didn't expect the... He didn't expect the miss. He thought it was his, He thought Ashley was going to score faster, so he didn't even bother. Probably wishes he went straight back to his net, though, because Ashley took his time with it. That was a clean wave dash recovery from Daniel after that kickoff, but uh, rather from Ashley after the kickoff, but Daniel still got possession. And he's going to try and uh, waste a little bit of time here. Brilliant. Um, secure the back boost there from Ashley. All while... Keeping away from the demo. Daniel does likewise, but at the expense of another goal. It's 8 6. Ashley not wasting any time. He's supersonic in every offensive play. We got a two goal game every single game this series. I think bar one has been. Actually, I'd say every game has been pretty competitive. Daniel ran away with game two on the EU server, but Ashley, brave comeback here with the ping disadvantage when he's already down so far in this series. Another air double bump. That's great defense from Daniel. So much better than the last uh, few tries. You'll notice he didn't just run away and try and save this while shadowing. He's noticed that that is not working at all against Ashley. Charges in fast. Puts himself in the way of it. And this, this is the kind of uh, defense I want to see more from Daniel in this particular matchup. He has to be as aggressive as possible. Because Ashley is just too good when you give him space. He, his offense is unstoppable when you give him space. Essentially unstoppable when it's perfectly executed. And now Daniel's got a huge boost advantage. I think he should be able to dish this one in. Nice control. He, he just plays it safe. That's really well played by Daniel. At no point during this entire um, back and forth was Daniel at risk of conceding. He didn't take any bad 50-50s. He didn't give Ashley any chances to establish boost and ball control simultaneously. So that's a great play by Daniel. Now Ashley, got to go all in here. He's got to play a high risk play. Oh, air dribble into a reset bump. That's pretty crazy. I like that from Ashley, but it's so hard to pull those off. And Daniel again, proactive with his defense, makes a save that wins the game and wins the series. Really well played by Daniel, GG's. What an entertaining matchup though. I can watch these guys play all day. I love it when you've got two players with different styles like this. Um, but yeah, Daniel taking it as expected, I think. Like I said, current form. Um, and also just experience proving to be too much for Ashley. That being said, Ashley still looks absolutely terrifying. My goodness, how do you defend that guy? How do you defend him? But yeah, GG's to Daniel and Ashley. Really appreciate both of them coming on and putting a show for us. Um, on away servers it's it takes a lot of mental fortitude to do this these are young guys and they're putting their egos aside just to put on a show for us um, and show us what the highest level of 1v1 looks like so massive massive shout out to both of them be sure to give them does Daniel stream? I think Daniel streams as well be sure to give them lots of love on Twitch I love this matchup though. This is such a cool style. Or it's such a cool stylistic mismatch. Maybe I shouldn't say mismatch. Mismatch makes it sound as if one person has an advantage, whereas I don't think that's the case here. The differences are Daniel is 
trying to play. He, he's trying to make no unforced errors and no mistakes. That is his, uh, his his idea. He just tries to play a perfect game. Whereas you've got Ashley, really pushing himself to the limit and beyond. He is trying to uh, take this to a level that he's even he's never uh, been at before. And either one of those styles can win. I think Daniel's style is more likely to win more often. There's the air double bump. See, I thought he was going to do this last game. I think he probably should have, because he's really good at these. <laughs> this is hard to stop. Um, yeah, I think Daniel's style is more likely to win most of the time. But Ashley's style is very much... It's like, it's like Devo back in the day. If he shows up, he wins. And there's nothing you can do about it. Like Devo, when he popped off in ones back in the day, Fairy Peak talked about him in an interview. What it's like, well, he talked about in an interview what it's like to play against Devo, and I thought he had a really cool take on it. His take was, well, you know, when you play against Devo, and Devo has the ball, you just watch him, because there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do to get the ball off him. He's just got the ball, and he's doing something crazy, and then one or two things happen. Either he scores, or he misses and you get an open net. That's really all there is to playing against Devo. And a lot of this matchup has been that. It's been Daniel just sitting back thinking, well, he's got double reset, so I hope he misses. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, it is a coin flip whether or not Daniel, or uh, whether Ashley misses. But yeah, Daniel's goal line defense is otherworldly. Oh, Daniel, what are you doing, buddy? That's three open net misses today. <laughs> I, you know, I think Daniel's definitely been a bit nervous. I've never seen this from him. I've never seen this from him. The inconsistency on the open nets. This is the first time I've ever seen this from Daniel. Like I told you guys, he is Mr. Consistent. Um, but apparently today, I think it's got to be that EUNA flavor. You know, that spice. It does add something to a matchup like this. Daniel repping his entire region. Oh, what a flick. Whew, that's clean. Ashley didn't even go out too far for this. Like, he just fakes the challenge, turns back immediately, and it's too late. It's just too late. In off the bar uh, for Daniel. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Thanks for the brand new prime. I really appreciate that. I've got to actually... Re I, I probably realized... So since this is EU versus NA, since this is Daniel versus Ashley, I just realized that we might have uh, Daniel fans in here who have never heard of Ashley before, and we might have Ashley fans in here who have never heard of Daniel before, so I didn't. I don't think I did justice to explaining why both of these players are so uh, hyped up right now and why they should be so hyped up right now. Um, but yeah, Daniel, he's the next first killer. He is the second coming of first killer in NA. I think that Ashley's just a nice one to himself here. I think he's... I think he's uh, being a bit self-deprecating with that one. Probably wishes he had a better save. Yeah, Daniel is the second coming of first killer. He's 14 years old. He's going to be 15 in December. I really think he could be the next first killer. The way he plays reminds me of first killer um, when he first burst onto the scene. And yeah, as long as he gets himself on a good team, as long as he has a good attitude, as long as he stays uh, positive, I think he, he has a great future with him uh, ahead of him in Rocket League. And then Ashley, he is the one-handed wonder. He plays with one hand. He was born with one hand. Um, I should really know this by now, but I always forget. I think he doesn't have a right hand, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. I think he was born without a right hand. So you have to go check out his stream. He plays on his own channel with a face cam. You can see how he does it. He kind of holds his controller between his right shoulder and his chin like a violinist would hold a violin. And he pushes all the buttons on the pad with his chin, and then he uses his left hand for the uh, joystick. So it's unbelievable. What this guy does is truly inspirational. And you know, I, I think he also has a future in threes if he stays on the grind. He's young as well, he's only 15, so he's only just came out of the scene recently. Made a switch from PS4. Immediately skyrocketed in, a ranked, in rank. Yeah, he's unbelievable. He is unbelievable. Both these guys are unbelievable. I think that mechanically, you're looking at the absolute pinnacle of Rocket League right now. These guys are top, top tier mechanics. Top tier mechanics. That's beautiful. Well played, Daniel. 
just dissecting Ashley's defense right now. He's back to a more solid kickoff strategy than Ashley. So he's winning kickoffs pretty consistently. And Ashley, when he's in those boost disadvantages, uh, or rather when he's in those positions with a boost disadvantage, he isn't as comfortable as Daniel is to defend with low boost. I think Daniel, even with 20, 30 boost, is pretty confident in his defense um, against anybody. He knows that he's going to have a good chance of stopping any attack because that is one of his absolute strengths in ones. Uh, whereas Ashley, he knows that he's got a long way to go to get to that level of defense um, in 1v1. It is possible, though. We've, se we've seen that kind of evolution in players in the past. We've seen that from Ixo. He started off as pretty much an offensive player who didn't know much in the way of defense other than early challenging. And then he absolutely figured out how to become better in that regard. Look at Ashley here, though. That's a double reset into somewhat of an air dribble dunk. That's mad. Has a little stall in there as well. No flips into the dunk. I mean, he's putting together so many plays here. That's that's difficult to... <laughs> it's difficult to even notice in real time. But yeah, there's still a chance here for Ashley to come back. He's got that pop-off ability offensively. He could just bang in five goals if he, uh, you know, picks the right shot. If he picks the right shots and executes on them. But uh, that being said, I think it's a low percentage chance because Daniel's just so good. Ooh, what a save by Ashley! In fact, he's hit that so hard that he can't catch up to it. Has to try and work this into the middle quickly. Oh, he will get a second chance at it because Daniel's taking the scenic route back. Where did Daniel go in this play? That's a slow recovery for him. Oh, he just didn't expect the... He didn't expect the miss. He thought it was his, He thought Ashley was going to score faster, so he didn't even bother. Probably wishes he went straight back to his net, though, because Ashley took his time with it. That was a clean wave dash recovery from Daniel after that kickoff, but uh, rather from Ashley after the kickoff, but Daniel still got possession. And he's going to try and uh, waste a little bit of time here. Brilliant. Um, secure of the back boost there from Ashley. All while... Keeping away from the demo. Daniel does likewise. But at the expense of another goal. It's 8-6. Ashley. Not wasting any time. He's supersonic in every offensive play. We got a two-goal game. Every single game in this series. I think bar one has been... Actually, I'd say every game has been pretty competitive. Daniel ran away with game two on the EU server. But Ashley, brave comeback here. With the ping disadvantage. When he's already down so far in this series. Another air double bump. That's great defense from Daniel. So much better than the last uh, few tries. You'll notice he didn't just run away and try and save this while shadowing. He's noticed that that is not working at all against Ashley. Charges in fast. Puts himself in the way of it. And this this is the kind of uh, defense I want to see more from Daniel in this particular matchup. He has to be as aggressive as possible because Ashley is just too good when you give him space. He, his offense is unstoppable when you give him space. Essentially unstoppable when it's perfectly executed. And now Daniel's got a huge boost advantage. I think he should be able to dish this one in. Nice control. He d just plays it safe. That's really well played by Daniel. At no point during this entire um, back and forth was Daniel at risk of conceding. He didn't take any bad 50-50s. He didn't give Ashley any chances to establish boost and ball control simultaneously. So that's a great play by Daniel. Now Ashley, got to go all in here. He's got to play a high risk play. Oh, air dribble into a reset bump. That's pretty crazy. I like that from Ashley, but it's so hard to pull those off. And Daniel again, proactive with his defense, makes the save that wins the game and wins the series. Really well played by Daniel. GG's. What an entertaining matchup though. I can watch these guys play all day. I love it when you've got two players with different styles like this. Um, but yeah, Daniel taking it as expected, I think. Like I said, current form. Um, and also just experience proving to be too much for Ashley. That being said, Ashley still looks absolutely terrifying. My goodness, how do you defend that guy? How do you defend him?